Yo, JD here, and we are here for my second installment of my mastering series. And the aim of this series is really just to help anyone, even of all abilities, even if you feel very experienced, to someone who's literally just picked up the game today, in how to get better at F1, specifically each track. And today we're at Bahrain, and I was really, really happy with this episode. I felt I went into a lot more detail than I did for my previous one. And I'll be looking to improve that quality every single time. So I'll be going through my race setup, my race strategy, my tips of how to really, really master this track. And hopefully you enjoy this. But first, it's learning the track itself. And we're just going to go through a lap here of basically just the breaking points. And then we'll be doing a slow motion after this as well on how we actually tackle this track. So I was always trying to get in the DRS as early as possible. And for this first corner, you really want to be braking just before the 100 meter board, in fact. So just before that there, staying in seventh gear, if you may notice, provides a lot more engine braking. Coming out through here now, completely flat out. Try and go flat out for that right hander. And again here, 100 meter board, roughly once again, going down to third gear just to get that little bit of rotation to the corner, straight in the car. Now, as you hit the curb, that's when we'll be braking down to fifth gear, kissing this curb and the left-hander as well. As the car is straight, that's where we want to be braking. It's first gear for the extra rotation if you need it, getting on the car without wheel spinning. And for here now, want to be braking in a straight line. Notice the steering wheel is hardly turning at all. First gear again, just get rotation, minimizing the wheel spin by short shifting through the gears. And now you want to be using all the track on the entry for this. So again, just after the 100 meter board, third gear if you really do need it through here. As the curb starts or finishes, that's where you want to be turning completely flat out for this corner. As you get notified of your delta, that's where you want to be braking for this. Short shifting through the corner again because it just really, really helps with traction. And now again, staying in seventh gear, using all the track possible, 100 meter board, third gear once again, just to get an extra bite. Slipping on that curb a little bit, but it doesn't really unsettle the car too much. Coming across the line, and we did a 25.5. And I can tell you that was really without too much practice at all. But now this is going to be a slow motion app where we're just going to try and go into even more detail of the braking. So for this turn one, you want to be looking here just as you hit the 100 meter board. That's where you want to be braking. First gear just to get the rotation. And now for this left hander, a little bit off the throttle, just slightly off the throttle. If you can go through flat out, that's absolutely perfect. Again, now approaching this braking zone, we'll be braking just as you hit the 100 meter board. Notice the throttle, want to be doing it as you exit the curb. That's where you want to be going on the power. 100% full power now. And for this slow motion, once again, as you hit this, a tiny dab and downshift on the brake here, fifth gear trying to go almost flat out as you can through this once again sick gear and now as you go onto the curb as you go diagonal to that curb that's when we we'll be braking once again second gear first gear as you hit the apex that's where you want to start short shifting because again that really does help with traction and for this corner here hardly hardly hitting on the brakes really doing the engine dude braking for you so about half on the brakes here really cool trail braking that's what it is what the engine do the braking for you Try not to lock up and we exit that corner pretty nicely once again. And for this one, as I said before, you want to be using all the track on the entry and about between the 50s, so about 70 meters out, that's where you want to be doing it. And you notice every time I hit the apex, just to downshift for that extra rotation, I go back up through the gears again. That just really helps the back end stay glued to the track. And the breaking point, as I said before, as you get that delta on the top right hand side and in peripheral vision, that's where you want to be breaking here. And as always, as you're going through the corner itself, once you get that rotation, you immediately want to go up through the gears because, again, it just really helps settle the car. 100 meter board through here now. Third gear. And you can see as you hit the apex, back into fourth gear again. So that's a common theme around here. Want to get that extra bite, but then quickly go up through the gears because it really will help stabilize the car. And we do a 25.5, which is a very good time. I did, only did six or seven laps or something there. And that was enough for, I think, only a few attempts off the world record. So with more time here, you can see, with more time, I think we're well within capable of getting a world record. And how I actually got the set, I literally downloaded the world record time. And they actually used 10 ballasts. But for this, I actually made it a bit more stable. I think if I use 
their wings and ballast i think a world record is definitely in capability there so now we've got to actually build the race setup as you can see there and that's exactly what we're going to do because online is a different story all together itself and now we're going to go in detail of what to actually do with the setup itself so you can see one eight wings here i feel that it's a perfect compromise in just downforce and straight line speed which is bahrain you definitely do need the top leaderboard that used one nine with 10 bass but i don't think it's really realistic in a race hence why i used that as for the transmission 60 100 if you go further to locked on the on throttle that just gives you more performance but a lot harder to control 60 100 is perfect for me as for geometry same as usual that does not change for any track at all but in the actual tt they use four three or three two i believe for me two two is just absolutely perfect curbs are quite a big problem around here so it really allows you to glide over the curbs and just gives me a great balance between downforce and just stability 11 5 11 7 i used in the tt but 11 5 just really stabilizes the rear but 4 4 what that does is it gives you really good straight line speed but it just makes the car a lot more balanced than 3 4 which is typically used 86 52 for the brakes i just think that just allows you to really not lock up whilst having good turning power and then for the tire pressures same as usual and nine ballast which is something i always always would try and use for every single track as well so we're going to go into this up a little bit more as well just before this but now we're actually going to look at what to actually do how to manage the curves or the ers for qualifying as you can see here now and this lap was a very good lap i think the aor pole on the soft tire was only a tenth quickness by uh, NOR Evo. So this is a very good lap considering this is not a strong track I really consider of mine. Warming up the tires a little bit and you can see we're on the soft tire which again is something I do recommend for this track is a one stop strategy. Soft to medium is really the strategy you want to be going for here. So we're going across the line now. DRS overtake for this first corner staying in seventh gear and now remembering those breaking points that you've learned previously before now. Going down through the gears again extra rotation for the first gear back into medium for the ers you can see here and then going back into hot lap so i'm using medium for the slow speed corners and we'll be able to see once again going through into this corner now putting it down to high because the deployment if you put it in the hot lap for the whole lap it's going to expend that and so we're going to go back down to high again because for these corners you don't lose any time and if anything you actually gain better traction so staying through high through these sequence of corners again just gives you very, very good traction. Hot lap will just make it a little bit skitty on the rear, to be honest, a little bit too much wheel spin. Going through here again, remembering how to brake in the straight line, extra rotation. And now once you hit the DRS, that's when you want to go back into hot lap. Then overtake once you hit sixth gear, just get extra straight line speed. And again, staying in hot lap now because you can really use the ERS to the end of the lap now. Looking at the gears once again, as that curb finishes, that's your turning in point. And again, remembering what we learned before, once that comes up, that's where you want to break and turn again. Staying in hot lap now and using overtake once again only in sixth gear because I think it just gives you a little bit better straight line speed. And now for this, staying in hot lap again because you can just use it to the end of it or of the track now. Coming off this last corner, overtake just to spend that last little bit. Running out of ERS a little bit but doesn't make a difference. And we actually did the 26-3 there. And as I said, using high in those really slow speed sections really gives you good benefit. 26.3 is a very competitive time on the actual soft tyres. So the setup, I feel, was absolutely perfect for this. And it was just it just works so well. It just gives you really good turning and stability. But now the race itself, we've gone over a little bit of a strategy, which is using the soft tyre here, which is something I do recommend. You could use even an even softer one, but I think the tyres and the mediums are going to be absolutely dead at the end. And we're going to look through the setup once again. So just really just trying to go into as much detail as possible. So hopefully you appreciate this. 1-8 wings, as I said, just gives me the perfect, just the perfect balance between just turning and rear stability. 65, 100. You could even put that to 60 if you're struggling a little bit on traction. But I think 65 or 60, 100 is the perfect for me. Suspension geometry, as I said, that just does not change at all. And then moving on to suspension itself. 2-2. As I said, for a front suspension, it just allows you to hit those curbs, um, which again, in the race, we'll be discussing a little bit more. But 2-2, I think, is very, very good. 11-5, basically, if you went 11-1, that would give you the most stable car possible. 
Um, so if you're just raising the rear anti-roll bar, it's just going to make the rear react a little bit more. So I think 11.5 is just almost, again, a perfect balance. 3.4 is what people would really typically use, but 4.4, 4, I can confirm that will give you better straight line speed, but it will just make it a bit more understory. But that's countered very nicely with the 9 bars, which you're about to see. And as for the brakes here, I usually used to use 89.53, but I found recently going down on the pressure and just in making the brakes go towards the rear a bit more, it, it stops me from locking up and gives me better change of direction and the 9 bars again, it works very well. This setup I, I was really, really happy with. As I said, it just gives me great, great turning, but the car isn't really too twitchy at all. As long as you're smooth, it's not really difficult to handle. And the, the pace is just, you can see by the qualifying there and in TT, and then you can be able to see in the race here, it was just, yeah, it was just miles better than anything that I've done before. So getting a good start here, which I definitely need to work on, but I definitely got a good start there using the low revs. And now if you can just survive the first couple of corners, which I did there, now hopefully you can get into a nice rhythm and we'll be going through over of what I recommend for a race. Starting on 3.7 laps of fuel, I like to use more fuel than really than necessary. Going down to here, using low ERS here and really for the corners, what I want you to pay attention to and the fuel as well, is you don't really need to use ERS through the corners at all. Using rich really only on the straights, but if you be able to see for this midfield section, using no ERS through here, and you might think you'll be losing a lot of time, but I can promise you, you're not going to be losing that much time. Not even changing the fuel to rich here, just keeping it in standard through pretty much just whole middle sector, then back down, down, back down to low for the ERS. You could even put it to zero there if you really wanted to. Putting it up to high again, which will definitely gain you a little bit of time on the straight, but not really anything. I'm back down to zero again. Just trying to get that good traction off here, which we do. And now we're going to go up on the fuel. Only really for the three or four straights you want to use rich. But down here again, back down to standard, back down to none. And what this does is it gives you very, very good traction, but also really looks after your tyres and not only entire wear, but also entire temperature as well. And I can promise you again, you can try this for yourself. If you ran rich and then high ERS for the whole lap, you might gain a tenth, two tenths. But for a whole stint, you'll go gain a lot more time doing this. And the lap time is honestly, it's really not different at all. And talking about the fuel I used at the start, I've tested it. I've actually tested it here. Running one lap of fuel versus four laps of fuel. The start wasn't any different. And the lap times were really not any different. And in all honesty, I think running more fuel actually gives you a little bit more of a stable car. And I actually do prefer that. And I think it's always best to just run a bit more fuel then you really do need, just in case you do need it in the end, rather than just running a lean where you're going to be very, very slow on the straights. But again, you can see here, adopting the same approach, no ERS at all, standard mix, back into rich there, but you can see not losing any time for that first sector, and we're skipping on to the end of lap three, starting lap four. We're actually still going quicker, so 30.4, again, is a very, it's a very competitive pace. If you look back in the AOR, this pace is very very quick at all and you can see just adopting the same approach rich on the straights standard in the corners no ers through the corners itself and this my tires are absolutely fine the pace is just maintaining the pace the entire time and looking through this first sector once again we're hardly down we're only 0.0 down and that's after four laps and you can see a 30.8 here again it, it just works doing this approach i think too many people really do feel that they need to use rich and a hot lap and overtake all the time. But I can promise you, just running and high on the straights and then using nothing really for the corners, you're not losing any time and you're saving your tyres so, so much. And in, in, a, in a race situation, you're going to be making up seconds in the race by doing this approach. But you can see for the first sector, once again, we're still matching our PB here and kissing those curbs you don't really want to attack the curbs too much around here you don't want to drive over them at all you really just want to really just kiss them and just glance them as i always say through here but the driving style the gears are used in qualifying there's no real difference at all you could go down an extra gear if you want that extra rotation but remember to short shift very quickly because it will just stabilize that rear end but you don't really have to drive any differently in terms of the braking points for a race probably five five-ish meters earlier most of the time but it's roughly going to be the same you can see as the delta came up there that's when we were braking 
there's not really too much and you just got to be very very smooth you can just get be very smooth and just get in the rhythm of the race you go and maintain your pace you go and maintain your tires which is very important and the pace is just very good and you can see this lap is just nice and relaxed using rich on the straights ers mainly on the straights and once you get to corners and you can see we're still lapping a 30.8 only three attempts off our best and you can see here once again for the first sector we're still well within you know, our PB here and the tire the tires are starting to go off a little bit now but we've still got this pace and that's because we've just been looking after our, particularly our rears 103 degrees but that's not really too bad on the soft tire here coming towards the end of lap 10 and you no know, we're still hitting the 30s if you can get in the 30s for the whole of the first stint that is an amazing achievement and that is race winning pace really to be honest here so I was really, really happy with this setup. And now, towards the end of lap 10, that's really when I'd recommend starting to think about pitting. We've got to spot that breaking point for the pits, which we're just going to do a slow motion of because it's very, very difficult <laughs> to spot that breaking point there. Uh, and that's what we're going to go over now. But you want to go onto the medium tyre. And then now, this should be you done for the end of the race. You could go slightly longer if you're feeling comfortable, but I don't really feel it's that necessary. But now, where do you want to be breaking for this? As the line of the track changes, that's where you want to be doing it. If you want to go back and look at that again. But basically, as the line just bends on the track, or the white line on the outside, that's where you want to be braking. And we literally got that perfect there. But now, going on to the medium tyre, we go look at what the tyre, uh, where it actually is. And from testing this, it's roughly 4% of the lap. It's not 4% no, max of the lap. So if you're pitting on lap 20 or lap 10, if you go do almost 20 laps, it's going to be nearish 80%, but that's not going to be a problem. You should not be at risk of a puncture. And from looking at my footage, and when I do league race around here and other people's footage, these tyres just get quicker and quicker, even on the last sap, because you potentially still do your faster sap as the fuel's coming down. It, these tyres are very, very durable. As I said, you could go more than lap 10, but again, I don't think that's really necessary too much because I think you'll get a good undercut here. And if someone did come past you on fresher tyres, it's going to be quite easy to stay with them because you could just use a slipstream. And with this 4-4 ride height as well, it's very, very slippery in a straight line. And this setup's very stable, very good turning. I, I think you'd be absolutely fine using this. So this is my uh, faster setup I did on the mediums here, really just of a demonstration of really just a tyre where you can see uh, 3 to 4% a lap rate, 4% max. So you, you, will be, you could even pit earlier than lap 10, but I think just... Extend it maybe to the end of lap 10 is what I'd really advise. And yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I went into a lot of detail here. Hopefully I've explained myself well and it's really benefited you. So if you did like this video, please leave a like and a comment. I really, really appreciate that. But sorry, it's been a bit of a long one, but I just really want to make these videos as good as quality as possible and something you can really use you know, for the life cycle of this game. Really. So you could just watch this video once and then you know you're absolutely good for the rest of it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, as I said. Really appreciate the support. It's been absolutely incredible. And next track will be China. Can't wait for that. And yeah, keep gaming. And see you soon. Peace.